Hello. Today I'd like to show you another idea to use some 5 inch squares for. I'm going to uh, show you quickly how to make a traditional block. It's a shoe fly block, but it's what I'm calling a big block for a big quilt because I'm, all my pieces are quite large because I'm using 5 inch squares. Um, so it's larger than sometimes when you see it. I have actually done a pattern for this quilt and it's called Big Block Big Quilts Shoe Fly. The block is, traditional name as far as I understand it is Shoe Fly. So that's uh, available on my website on gourmetquilter.com. Um, and so now I'll just quickly run through how we're going to make this. So you do need to use some half square triangles and I have shown you in a previous video in Quilting Tips and Techniques 006 I showed you how to make the half square triangles using five inch squares and so when we've made them they're kind of a little bit like this and then they just need to be trimmed ever so slightly and they end up being a four and a half inch finished uh, sorry unfinished square so a cut four and a half inch um, square so that means if we're going to use them with some other squares and in the block here we're alternating with some plain squares they also will need to be trimmed down to the same as those to the four and a half inches so I've got my squares here this top one's going to be my center square and then I've got some more white squares for the rest of the block and I'm just going to trim them down to the four and a half inches so they're ready to use so just using my board to help me line everything up for the measurements I can trim away a little bit on one side and then I'll come over here and at four and a half inches away from that other edge I, again I'm using my board to help line everything up I can trim that off and then I'm going to turn that around and do the same thing again with the other two sides there's other ways of doing this but this is how I tend to do it so I've trimmed that edge and again I'm lining up with the board at four and a half inches so now I've got my half square triangles and my other squares are all the same size which is really helpful so what I'm going to do now is lay the block out and that square's going in the middle and then I'll pick them up and sew them together. So I've just got all these delicious looking fabrics I must say. And these two in here and this one in here. So that's all laid out ready to go and I just find it's easier to lay it out and then I don't get things wrong when I've got different fabrics in different places and I just will sew them together so off to the sewing machine and just with my quarter inch seam allowance and I'll just pick up the next pair so flip that over so that it's right sides together the next row in the block and again with the bottom row of the block so this is basically a nine patch block because there's nine patches once you've made your half square triangle units and by sewing them like this it kind of all stays together and in the right order so if I was to lay that down again we know where we're at and now I'm going to pick up the top one and sew it onto the next one and then I'll do, be doing the next two as well and, and running them through the machine okay so that was my center so I'll put the next one on there And I, I find this, this method of laying everything out just keeps everything straightforward. Then I don't make mistakes of which fabric to pick up next. This is when it's on an organized quilt, of course, on a disorganized quilt, it's a different story. So I'm just going to quickly press those. And I'm just going to press them the way the fabrics want to go because of the way those seams are in there they want to go in that way even though it's under the white I think it's probably not going to be a problem and I'll do the bottom row at the same time here and I could cut my rows apart to do this it probably would be slightly simpler but I find with a block with with a, a nine patch block it just works just about as well to leave them all together and then they don't get all confused as to which one's going where 
these ones now have to come out. I want the seams to go in opposite directions where they're going to meet when I join the next bit up. So these ones oops, have to go out that way. So now my rows are all ready to, to join together. I don't have to cut them apart. I can just flip that over and join that. And if I press my seams right, they'll go in opposite directions where they meet so that they'll just snuggle in together. And they are. same to do and the block is done. So same thing again, lay those right sides together, nestle those seams in together and this so this block is going to finish at, at 12 and a half inches. It's going to measure 12 and a half inches so when it's sewn in it will be a 12 inch block. And this time I'm just going to press the seams in the same direction. There's no real easy way when you're working with white to keep the white without any seams under it, so I just give up in the end. So there I have my block. So now I've got two blocks that kind of reverse a little bit. I've got the blue in the center and the yellow, etc, etc. And there's different ways of, of putting these together. You might sash them, you might just join them up together and you'll end up with a sort of a almost a secondary pattern occurring. Um, there's lots of different things that you could do with them. It was mostly just to give you an idea and show you how to make the block. And I have made a quilt um, according to my big block quilt pattern uh, in quite different colors. It's an enormous quilt, I have to say. It's huge. But I just thought you might like to see some other colours. So I haven't organised my colours quite so much on this one, uh, where I've, I've used the white background on the one I've just made. I've actually got a dark background. This is kind of my shoe fly, these triangles in the centre bit, and all the darks are the background, and it's all scrappy. I've used completely different fabrics throughout, and then I've sashed my blocks here. So I just thought that was uh, just another idea for using the five inch squares and just make it makes a really nice quilt in the end so even the traditional patterns can look great in some of the fresh new fabrics or if you like the traditional then that's really good too thank you